Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. Today we have the final planet tutorial in our solar system and we're going to be looking at Uranus. Now this planet is pretty funky. From a distance you could argue it's the most bland planet from all of them. It's just one single solid color and just very very foggy. But there are some interesting techniques to go into and you know, it's quite a fun one. We're mainly going to be focusing on Cinema 4D, there's not too much to do in After Effects, so um, I guess we get into it. Now, one of the things I would like to let you know is that if you come to the ArtStation store right here, all the planets from the solar system are actually available right now as a project file. For Syntactic Labyrinths, our sci-fi film, we basically had to make all of these anyways. So here you go. They're all available. You can get the project files. They include all the textures and the uh, Corona render, render settings and everything. So you'll be good. First of all, let's have a look at our scene. The planet consists of a planet layer, which is just a sphere with a planet texture map. And then we have two spheres that are slightly bigger with a volume material on top. One for the fogginess of the planet and one for the atmosphere. And then we have this rings folder over here that has all these different rings. Uranus is a interesting planet because it's very similar to Neptune when it comes to what it's made of. Most of it is basically methane gas due to the way that it breaks the light from the sun, gives off this kind of bluish, baby bluish vibe. When the sun is shining straight at Uranus, it becomes hot at that point and then it fogs up the entire planet, which is why it's very difficult to see any of the surface details of the planet. What we know about the planet is that it is really, really large and it's the third biggest planet in our solar system and it has a radius of 25,362 kilometers, which we convert into centimeters just for the ease of the size of our viewport. The fog layer over here is bracketed up a little bit and the atmosphere is bracketed up as well. So we're giving them basically 100 to 200 kilometers of distance between one another. Let's quickly go into the planet material itself. It's just super simple because there's not much going on with this planet. We have a diffuse channel, which is just a 2K Uranus diffuse map that I found online that I then have blurred out a bit inside of Photoshop to even get rid more of some of these details. I really just want to have the spectrum of colors, almost just having a gradient, but not really any defined shapes. Then for the reflection, we just have the uh, default IOR of 1.6 and we have the glossiness set super, super low to make sure that we have almost no reflection, almost no defined hotspots. For the first volume material, the fog material, we have an absorption color of somewhat of a yellowish white light, which would be the wavelengths of the sun that then get absorbed, which then gets scattered into the texture map into this bluish color. I left the distance to be about a thousandth, which basically means that it's pretty soft, getting to the softer side, but it's not as transparent as, let's say, if I would, were to put this to like 6,000 or something like that. The atmosphere over here, as you can see, we're using a similar volume with a very similar absorption color. Now we're using a distance of 6,000 to have a better, softer fall off of this atmosphere. We don't want the atmosphere to dominate the planet. We want to make sure that the atmosphere really feels us just that extra little hint of detail. As you can see right at the edges here, the planet is slowly transitioning into that bluey atmosphere right over here as well. It makes it look very interesting, very believable, but you don't want to make it too strong. We're using a Fresnel as a scatter effect to make sure that we um, fade it out in the middle and right at the edges by having a black at the front and a black at the end. The colors over here are some kind of muted variation of blues, a little bit into the green almost, but you know, make sure we stick to the blue. Everything of Uranus is kind of just one type of material going on there. From what I could find, almost everything is just methane gas, at least on the surface. So at least from our point of view, this is kind of what we need. 
It's also very good to have some kind of book, photography book when it comes to planets or something that has multiple high resolution photographic references. So anytime that you just are not completely sure whether, whether you're going the right direction, just pull it up and give it a close inspection. So for the sun, we're just using a very large size to get this softer, slightly softer fall off, which will then emphasize the idea of this being more of a foggy, misty planet. One of the things to consider is that if you were to composite this asset into the background of, let's say, a spaceship passing, that spaceship will probably need to have the harsher sunlight. Either use an espresso tag to exclude one sun with the larger size from the spaceship and exclude the sun with the softer size from the planet, or just render two separate passes and composite them later in After Effects. For the intensity, I've set that to 8, which is something that you have to kind of play around with yourself. The only thing that I like to do is make sure that the camera settings have a shutter speed of 1 over a thousand second, which is kind of similar to what most of these space probes or space satellites would be using. A super fast shutter speed to be able to get some clarity out of these bright ass planets. The f-stop is set to 16 so that we can get most of this planet in focus and then together these two settings do make sure that your planet gets pretty dark which is why at that point you'll be able to play around with the intensity setting until you get to a value that matches something that's that feels natural that feels similar to any reference that you've been looking at. Of course, then you can just come in afterwards and just play around and let's say change this to 1 over 60th and you'll see, oh, here you go. We have a super overexposed Uranus. Yeah, that at, if you are compositing this into a shot that requires that kind of lighting condition, at least you can be consistent between shots. You can be consistent between whatever you're doing with whatever camera settings. Looks pretty cool, though. Look how much glow that's giving. Put that back to a thousandth. And one more thing about the sun, I'm setting the color to temperature over here, and I'm using a very standard temperature of 6,500, basically providing us with white light, which would be the purest form of all the combined spectrums straight out of the sun onto the planet with no interference of any of the wavelengths. Uranus has quite a large variation of rings, and you can find all that information just on Google. Have a look on the screen right now. This is all the information for the different rings of Uranus. And what I did is I just use a disk object, and I created the inner radius and the outer radius to be as large as what they should be, according to the statistic, but then convert it from kilometers to centimeters. I gave it about 300 rotation segments to make sure that it does feel like a ring. And I just went through, I did actually name them accordingly to what I found online. Some of them are a bit thicker, some of them are a bit thinner. So these rings are basically made up of a bunch of tiny, tiny particles. It's not ideal to just be rendering millions and millions of particles all around this ring just to make sure you get something believable. So what I did is I created this layered material over here that includes two copies of basically the same noise shader with slightly different material settings. So let me open this over here. Inside of the diffuse, I have a uh, noise with just some very slight variation of color, basically no variation. And then inside of the reflection, a super low glossiness. And inside of the opacity, we have a FBM noise shader with a global scale of 20, kind of giving it that speckled look. And then I played around with the low clip and the high clip to give it a bit more of a contrast. Now, black means no and white means yes in this case. So we are creating this speckled look of all these little particles. Now, from what I found online is that not all of these particles in the rings of Uranus are from the same material, and some of them are supposedly actually pretty shiny and pretty reflective. So what do we do? Well, we duplicate that material, we go into our reflection channel, bump up the IOR to be about 50, and then inside of the opacity channel, I kept everything the same except for slightly different values for the low and high clip. And I also played around with the seed over here. So there you go. 
I slapped both of these materials together inside of this layered material over here. And then I used another FBM noise with a slightly larger global scale and also a low and high clip adjustment. And I made sure that that's what's allowing the glossier, shinier material to go through. And that's gonna just be sitting right on top. And if you can see, it looks pretty cool. It's like, it's pretty decent, right? You have some of these spots that are shining a bit, and even in the darkest areas, you can still have some detail, which uh, is probably what Eric is gonna be happy about. He always tells me I'm underexposing about everything I do. So here we go. Now, the next thing is, what if we wanna be making a closer up shot and we want to have a bit more detail into these rings? So let me just jump to one of these cameras over here. So basically I took the platonic and I gave it a very simple black rough material, just something like concrete or anything that feels like a piece of floating debris. Then I slapped that thing inside of a cloner object and I set the object mode to object. And inside of object, I then just put in each of the rings, duplicated all of these cloner setups, named them accordingly and put in each of the corresponding meshes right into there. Now I have a count that varies from 20,000 on the thinner rings and 40,000 on the thicker rings. And if there's a really thick ring, I went up to about 60,000. And I made sure to set instance mode to render instance. And for each one of these rings, I have changed the seed. Now, the reason you wanna be changing the seed is because you're basically working with the same ring that has the same distribution of topology all over the place. And because you're working with the same cloner, the same amount of particles and the same particle inside of each one of those, you're gonna start seeing a repetitive pattern all throughout these rings. So by changing the seed on each one of these and also changing the count on some of these, it's basically a seamless transition. Now I'm adding these on top of the already super, super thin rings that we created before. Now, the next thing I did is I selected all of these cloner objects over here and I added a random effector. And let me just hop into here. The only thing I did with the random effector, I set up the parameters with a uh, 50, 170 centimeter position variation and a scale of two. I made sure to set up uniform scale to make sure that the X, Y, and Z get scaled down equally or scaled upwards. I also set up the rotation to go from uh, 60, 60, 60. It's not something you will really be noticing right now, but it's just all these little things to make sure you can break it up even, even further. I am just for the sake of argument, gonna create one more new camera and I'm gonna really go super, super close. So for a shot this close, I would actually completely turn off all the original simple render rings we made and just really focus on the detail of all of these small pebbles. Because once it starts curving around the planet, you lose the shape of the rings anyways, and the uh, agglomeration of all of them together, the clustering up really makes it look like a solid band anyways. And right here up front, you kinda don't wanna be seeing the straight up pattern from that layer underneath. One thing I would probably do right now is just duplicate the entire system of cloners and then manually quickly change the platonics inside to be like half size or maybe a third of the size and change the seed again. Then you would just have that little dusty, foggy detail that's right underneath that. I'm quickly gonna be doing that and I'll do one more render and I guess that's everything we need to do today. Oh, exciting. This is turning out to be pretty cool stuff. This looks pretty okay. All right, you know what? With the magic of editing, I'm gonna be slapping the final result on the screen right now. And look at how epic that looks. And uh, that's it. That's everything you need to know. I hope this was useful. Thank you, thank you very much for watching the tutorial. Whatever compositing techniques I end up doing in After Effects, it's probably just gonna be making a Luma mask from the edge by using some Gaussian blur and a uh, fill generate fill layer with black and white onto the planet 
and then using that luma mask as a camera lens blur map just so you get that little bit of a blurry edge right at the edges of the planet and that would be it a little bit of color correcting and here you go those are all the planets we need to do for our solar system thank you very much to all of you who stuck around with this series and have been watching the journey of creating all these different planets if you are interested in seeing pluto which i guess is a planet at least i grew up with it being a planet then uh, yeah be sure to leave a comment below and we'll figure something out I'm definitely going to be doing one more tutorial on how to create your own custom planet maps. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to stay up to date. We got a bunch of Syntactic Labyrinth stuff coming up next. And it's not only going to be planets. So uh, thank you. Talk to you soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye.